I want to give uh, five career tips for, you know, targeted primarily at the creative community, but it applies to almost anybody. I gave a similar presentation like this <clears throat> to a more, a less seasoned group of uh, soon to be graduates from my alma mater, WWU up in uh, Bellingham, Washington. And so this one I heavily modified for the creative community in greater Portland area, <clears throat> which means there's no sales tax. So anyway, uh, so my day job, uh, you can Google me, but uh, is last 20 plus years has been Anvil Media Digital Marketing Agency. Uh, in that same amount of time, I've been an adjunct professor at Portland State. I actually teach a search engine marketing workshop. Uh, if you're looking to network, uh, 52 is, is a partner with us on PDX Mindshare. It's a LinkedIn group. It's a, a newsletter and a job and event board at pdxmindshare.com. And as I talk through the digital dark arts in reference to building your brand and your career, uh, scmpdx.org is a good resource. Uh, and for reference, I've been a past board member with PAF, now Think Northwest. I teach a social media workshop for SCORE. Uh, I briefly have been in the, on, the, on the client side three times in, in uh, 24, 25 years. So I mainly am an agency guy. So that's my perspective. And you can read my writing at Smart Brief as well. I write for the industry pubs. So <clears throat> let's talk about the five tips. Uh, number one, I'm going to start with curating a rewarding career. So you can say creating, developing, building, but I'm going to say curate because uh, it sounds like a really cool word for the creative community. But the idea is this, <clears throat> if you are not, have you, if you haven't taken the time <clears throat> to go out to the coast, to the mountain, to somewhere far away, outside of your home, outside of your home office, your office, to figure out your pa passion or your purpose, why do you wake up in the morning? You should. So uh, watch the videos uh, by Simon Sinek on YouTube, his uh, TEDx talks, and then <clears throat> do your own discovery. You know, why do I exist? What am I been put on this planet to do? And that should help help guide direction. And then harnessing your passion. So what you were put on this planet to do may not be the same as what you're passionate about. Usually there's overlap, if not complete alignment. But sometimes, you know, I'm passionate about driving cars as fast as I can, legally or illegally at times. Um, but that's not why I was put on this planet. Um, so if you can harness your purpose and your passion together, you've got magic sauce because you're not working. You're doing what you love. So one way to do that is to figure out where you want to go. <clears throat> you know, what does that ideal outcome look like at the peak of your career? Maybe you're already there. Uh, and then leverage your skills and knowledge to get help get you there. Um, setting a timeline is helpful. We'll talk about this in a future slide for what your career trajectory looks like and what those milestones are. And then how you get there. So harnessing your strengths, your unique abilities, aka your freak factor. You can Google all these things and read about them. Or you can read my articles. But the idea is to fully understand what you do better than anybody else and use that, harness that power to get you along your way and curate your career. Second step, leverage these five success habits. Um, I've, I've I can say that I've done very well financially better than I ever thought I would as a business owner the last 20 plus years. But these are five things that anybody can do that have worked exceedingly well for me that might help you in your creative journey. So number one is if you're the most responsive uh, professional in your discipline um, than anybody else, you are gonna get opportunities others want. It's as simple as if you've ever hired a plumber or an electrician, you typically hire the one that just simply returns your call. Um, so in the creative space, that's no less true. Um, B, answer the call, right? Uh, whether it's an email, smoke signal, Slack channel, or whatever. Staying top of mind is something a lot of creatives don't do well. In fact, most professionals don't do a good job of staying top of mind with people in their own business if they're in-house, uh, you know, client side, or if they're in the agency with management, or if you're servicing clients directly as a freelancer, staying on top of mind with your clients. Um, and past clients and prospects. It takes time and effort. Uh, not most graphic designers don't have training in, in email drip marketing strategies or account-based marketing. And so, you know, you have to build those tools to keep things going, to keep the, keep the wheel moving and the funnel full. Um, I prefer to send the elevator down. I pay it forward. So I've, I've had a, a good career. I feel very fortunate and I help people as much as I can. Informational interviews, uh, connecting dots, helping others. And it has definitely helped me as a result. Uh, but that's not why I do it, but it helps. Setting goals, very simple. You can see from 1999, 20, almost 22 years ago, 
maybe more, I'm not good at math. Um, I wrote these goals and I achieved all, but um, I, I don't floss enough. And I, um, and I probably don't smile enough at strangers, not that we even see people behind masks anymore, um, but I've ac accomplished every single one of these goals and I did them all within the year. And so every year I set new goals and I've set one year, five year, 10 year goals, and I've accomplished all of them. And so if you don't set those goals, uh, you'll never hit them. And the best thing to do is start at your end game. What does retirement look like? And work your way back by, by year, by um, quarter, month, week, and day. Build that so you know each day what you should be doing towards your end goal. Is it retirement at 40 or retirement at 85 or you don't wanna retire because you love what you do? That's all good, but you should map that plan out. And know the difference between being busy and being productive. I've seen some of the most efficient designers create consistent um, mediocrity. I've seen very inefficient designers create brilliance, but neither are too particularly sustainable to maximizing your value. So figure out that magic mix of, of structure, process, and discipline. Number three is to build and nurture your network, uh, especially true for the independents, the, um, the uh, contractors, the freelancers of the world. It starts really, believe it or not, um, there are other creative platforms and creative communities in the social graph. Um, LinkedIn is where business happens. So you have to have your LinkedIn uh, profile fully optimized. In addition, whether you have a website or a virtual portfolio or not, you need to send connection requests and build that network. The bigger the network, the fewer degrees to Kevin Bacon, the better. Uh, asking regularly for endorsements and recommendations, especially as a freelancer or contractor. And then participate in LinkedIn groups. There are groups for any and every kind of uh, discipline, industry, you name it, pastime. Uh, spend time in those and then update your feed. Post your latest work or your latest questions or industry news you find in, uh, interesting. Um, if you want to see what an optimized LinkedIn profile looks like, check mine out and connect with me. Uh, I have over 20,000 connections and it helps me build my business. It also helps me help others. So you can do the same. Building your personal brand. I have a whole separate presentation on this. I've, I think we've done it before with 52 in the past, but the idea is this. Um, become become a, a writer or a publisher. Create your own content and syndicate it, not just on your own website or blog. You can use LinkedIn, has its own blog built into your, pro, up, your profile, it's free. You can write for other uh, professional um, organizations. Think Northwest, for instance, is accepting content and portfolio work. Um, that's you know ideally originally posted there. Um, so build your your presence in the industry and the community with through organizations like Think Northwest, uh, formerly Portland AdFed. And then you can speak if you don't if you're not afraid if it's not painful. Speaking, start in front of local groups, um, you know, in front of classes. Um, work your way up. So I started speaking at PSU as a guest for a couple of classes 20 something years ago. And then one of the instructors said, hey, you should apply for this. We need somebody to teach this class. And that started my career as an adjunct. I don't do it for the money, obviously, um, but it, it's something I enjoy and it's been very um, fruitful for me and rewarding. You can become an expert source for the media, pitching yourself uh, through Help a Reporter Out or Quoted, Q uh, W O T E D, free feed of, uh, or limited, feeds for uh, the free price of seeing what editors are asking about in terms of design, creative, advertising, marketing, and, and become a source. At Anvil, we've generated 100 press mentions the last four consecutive years. Uh, being a very small agency, that's somewhat of a feat. It just takes commitment. And then, uh, you know, of course, the creative world is, a, is surrounded by awards. Um, we typically, and then we're not as in the creative space in the digital search marketing space, digital marketing, but we get a lot of awards and we maximize the value of those awards, promoting the bejesus out of them. It's not an ego thing to me. It's, it's content for marketing, for drip campaigns, for email, for our search marketing efforts. It's just pure fodder. It's fuel, but it obviously has that third party validation. That's important, especially if you're a freelancer, graphic designer, share the work that especially has been award winning, award winning or notable. And the lastly, stay close to the money. In the original slide, I just had Tom Cruise um, with the famous phase from one of my favorite movies, Jerry Maguire. Um, there's a fatal flaw in that movie that I won't have time to go into. We can talk about it later, Elaine, but um, great story. But the idea is this, I, my, my uncle told me this as soon as I graduated with a degree in business with a marketing concentration back in the mid, early mid nineties was, he said, stay close to the money. I did not know what he meant because in PR I was, 
on behalf of clients pitching the media, maybe the media covers my client, maybe in a good light, and maybe the, the customer, the end user reads it, buys it, we're still two degrees away from the money. We're insulated by both the client and the uh, editor or, the, or the, uh, the media from the client's revenue stream. So in 96, I started optimizing websites and I realized suddenly I was on top of the dollars. I was watching the money flow and that has been huge for, for my career and built a business on it. Um, but you can do it with yours as well. So you can, as a designer, if you're a, say a graphic designer, jack of all trades, master of none, it's really hard to differentiate. You have to be one of the world's best designers to stand out as, a, as an independent. Or you can become a, a, a technician in a specific type of uh, work, you know, video editing, um, you know, certain types of, types of design, certain platforms, become an expert on a certain platform. Adobe isn't necessarily what I mean. It's uh, specific within, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I work with audio editing for podcasting, or I edit videos for podcasting, or webinars and PowerPoint, whatever. Um, the other option is own a vertical. So, you know, some of my favorite agencies in Portland have very specific verticals. Sandstrom does, um, you know, spirits, package design for, for um, liquor brands and so forth. And they've mastered that. They've worked with a lot of brands, but that's one thing they do particularly well. And that's what they're known for. Um, so you can do that. Or Jeff Pollard, famous logo designer here in Portland that has been a teacher. He's been a lot of things, but as a solo guy, he's known for doing logos and identities. That's his bag. So the other thing to think about when you're talking about maximizing earnings is are you the captain or the best player, right, on your team uh, in-house or um, at an agency? Are you the coach, meaning are you the manager of that team? Are you, are you running a creative team or are you one of the team players, right? Coaches make more than, than all but the top 1% of players, right, or the top 10%, let's say. Or are you a commissioner? Are you like Mark Morin that runs Think Northwest? Are you in the industry or the... Uh, uh, 52 Limited founder Brooks was also uh, ran PAF for a while as well. So as a commissioner, you see things that others don't. There's a benefit to being kind of in the industry. So that can mean teaching, um, or you can try and get out of the hourly by writing a book, um, by creating intellectual property, like assets, things that you sell. I'm, um, you know, NFTs, non-fungible tokens, as a way for you to create artwork and then sell it as original artwork, even though it's digital. Um, check into it. Like, who knows where that's going? It's kind of a frenzy right now. But these are all ways to to build revenue, to build a retirement, to build income. Uh, my goal has been to get out of the hourly world forever. The babysitting model, it's not necessarily broken, but it's antiquated. So uh, we're just not doing a great job at Anvil with that. Um, but if you look on, on April 1st, we have a press release going out that should be entertaining around this NFT craze. So those are the five... Um, tips. I know we are always um, short on time. And these, to speed things up, are a bunch of links to articles. Um, Elaine will get you a copy of this. I believe there'll be a recording as well for future reference. But these are all dive into each of the five tips I've given. And you can check out the insight section, which is our resource section at anvilmedia.com. We have uh, white papers, uh, webinars, all kinds of content, uh, including our blog articles and so forth. And then follow me or Anvil on the Twitter, connect with us on LinkedIn or your platform of choice. I think we're on all of them except for MySpace. And with that, I'll hand it over to back over to Elaine.